I hope the guys from TST Industries are watching, because they fucking should be. My name is Matt, welcome back to the shop, and in this box we have the two pistons, another set of two pistons from a Ducati, um, that my main man, I don't know if he wants me to use his name or not, so I'm just not going to for the time being, um, has sent me, these are absolutely fucking beautiful, the reason why he sent me these is because of what they look like, and he um, rightly said, you're going to fucking love these, <laughs> and he is not wrong. So, what is going on in this box? We have one piston, we have two piston, where number two piston, or let me put it this way, that piston looks very, 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 very familiar. Oh, shit. Awesome. Right, so... Where do I start? Good question. Right, so these are the big brothers of the R3 pistons. I think this one was 1098. I should check. <laughs> so I've got some pictures here of the actual cylinder head. You can see, I'll point out the regions there are where you can see where it started to, the aluminium has started to micro weld to the top of the piston. Same kind of thing, same kind of deal. This is in the squish band region. And this, uh, but what was I going to say? Uh, yes, this is a 1098R. He did give me some information, so let's quickly read through that. Because um, I did ask for him to tell me a bit about each one. Um, he said it's detonation, or he thinks it's detonation. Well, I've showed you the other, the other ones. To me, this, this is not detonation whatsoever. This is from a 1098RS uh, World Superbike engine it did one track session he said the oil cooling in the bottom of the piston was working uh, he said have rebuilt the engine and now it runs without a problem but we had to lower the compression um, he says he, he's sure that the oil lines are open so on and so on and so on and then I basically just asked him about the other ones so um, with our failure analysis face, let's just have a look what we can see and what we can disregard. So these bits on the top you can see there, these are all fucking mushed up. These are the bits that have broken off here and the bits that haven't been liberated and, um, you know, he's taken out. He obviously didn't include all the bits unless there's a bit that's stuck in there, which is awesome. Um, so what can we see? Well, straight away we can see one piston is fine. One pi I say fine bit slightly not no it's just polished a bit one piston is fine one piston looks like absolute fucking dog shit and it's broken when we look at the crown of this piston compared to the other piston we can see that this is a lot darker than this one so getting back to our detonation piston we have from our monster that you can see here you can see that when things get hot i.e. the detonation it goes a lighter colour than when it does this. Why is that? This is so hot that basically what happens is is the carbon um, reacts with the oxygen because the energy levels are high enough and turns into CO2 and shit like that. So there's not very um, much single carbon. Schm uh, schmutz, schmoo, um, soot. You know what I mean? I was trying to... <laughs> schmoo and... <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> God help me. But you can see where the region where it gets hot. And as you can see with this, where the valves are, it's fine. But although you can see there's a massive transition going from there to there. Same thing with the other one that detonated like a bastard. This one is obviously a tiny bit hotter because you can see that it started to have problems around the outside. Um, which is where the greatest squish region, squish band is. So, what we can see is one piston's obviously shit the bed. But we can also see there's a temperature difference here. These are from the same engine. This one is actually the rear cylinder, which I was actually quite surprised about. Um, the reason why I'm surprised, so let's just do it that way. That way is the front of the bike. That's cylinder one. That's cylinder two. This is the front cylinder. Uh, where's my paint pen? Where the fucking hell did I put that pen? 
So that's the front cylinder and um, so F and rear should be facing the right way which would be that way and that way. So the intake side is this one, intake side is this one, this is the exhaust side and my paint pen's been a dick. Doesn't like carbon too much. So this is the rear cylinder. I should really rub that off and put rear in the same fucking place. This is the rear cylinder. The reason why is the rear cylinders on a lot of these bikes get the same, uh, get more fuel because this one is stuck in the airstream. It's not so much with Ducati, and this is why Ducati have done it because they lean the, the front cylinder pretty much forward and then have the rear cylinder um, a bit like the SV. But the thing is, the rear cylinder is surrounded by frame and all the rest of it, while this is more stuck into the airstream. The other thing is, as well as the exhaust is stuck right behind it where this exhaust is in the airstream. Um, so generally rear cylinders, when you do testing, when you design an engine test it, when rear cylinders generally run hotter, so what you do is you generally use fueling to help relieve that. Basically you richen this cylinder slightly so that basically the piston gets cooled and the cylinder and the cylinder head get cooled more. I should say cylinder head as in the combustion chamber side of things. So, uh, what else can we see? Well, we can see that we can see where the thrusting side is. These have Teflon coatings on. You can see there that they both thrust on the same side. When we turn to the exhaust side, not as much of this Teflon coating shit has come off. Now, before someone asks, where does the Teflon coating end up going? Some of it is burned in your combustion chamber if it makes it that far. Generally, it doesn't because the rings are sealing quite well. A lot of it ends up in your fucking oil. Again, another reason why you should regularly change your oil as specified. But anyway, uh, what else can we see? Well, this is what I wanted to see with the R3s. If we look at the underside of the piston, the one that didn't die, we can see that it's pretty clean, just like our monster pistons. If we look at our rear piston, the one that failed, put that to one side, you can see there, right in the corner, there's some burnt oil. Round here you can see it as well. This basically the oil burning means that when the oil was splashed onto the bottom of here, either thrown up from the crankcase or the squirters, and in this case the squirters, just like most engines, modern engines that are high power, um, the oil is hitting this surface and it is getting so hot, the residual oil that's on here, that it's burning. It's literally just burning and turning to carbon. Where on this piston we can't see any sign of that. I've looked everywhere, I've got some, I looked under the microscope, I couldn't see really anything. But there's a lot of shit. Now, some of this shit is obviously stuck in a box that's covered in crap and stuff like that. But that carbon on the inside, on the bottom there, that is burnt oil. So, uh, what else can we see? Well, we can see that the rings are intact. That one's nipped ever so slightly right there, the top one. Um, but the rings, if I take them out, take this one out without snapping it. They are trapped because the pistons have obviously been running and deformed. Oh, it's trapped on one little section, and we'll get to that why it's trapped there. But if we look at the rings, this ring has snapped. See right there. But if you notice, it's snapped, but it hasn't really bent up or anything. That is quite flat. There's a slight... Is there a slight bend or is it just the camera? No, no, it's, it's straight. It's flat. I'm not putting any tension on this or anything, not, no compression or anything. You can see as I turn it, that ring is pretty flat. <laughs> the bottom ring, we'll get to the, the secondary ring in a second. But again, if we take this ring off, the top ring of our good piston, the one that didn't die, same, same kind of thing flat yeah flat to the basically flat to the same degree if you can see there's a slight bend to it and all the rest of it but there is a slight bend to it and rings are generally not perfectly flat there'll be some spring tension in it and stuff like that so what else can we see about our good piston secondary ring she's a bit tight she is fine like i say she's nipping a bit sometimes to do these engines have been through absolute hell if you look at this ring, this ring has a step groove in it, again, 
flattish towards the end she bows out a bit but there's no real damage to these rings oil control rings we don't really need to worry about i have checked them there's no scorching no burning i've got some pictures here of the rings and you can see there's these little scuff patterns little circular patterns this is where the ring hits the top of the the ring groove and then back down again and it's little scratches that progress like this little curls because the rings are rotating it's just a mechanical procession it's just something that happens unless you stop them um, and you won't see that same kind of scuffing on two stroke rings because they have the pins to stop them moving unless something went drastically wrong so as far as we can see around the ring around the um, ring land at the top there is no we can still see the machine marks like i say this hasn't this is a race engine it hasn't been uh, done a lot of miles but you can see all the ring you can see all the machine marks um just basically cuts that are concentric and yeah nothing wrong with that one um like i say a lot of the teflon coatings come off but again i'll show you some pictures you can see that the machine marks can still be seen so it hasn't actually touched this surface or if it has it's touching it by 50 atoms or something it's not really rubbing away the grooves um, on the side of the skirt same kind of thing here you can see where it starts to rub that's the contact patch there it's starting to rub um, so with this one it started here as it wore this away it started on these sides why is it like this this is all to do with thermal expansion and the stiffer parts these bits are stiffer but they've also got more material there this is a thin web if you apply enough force for this this can deflect where this is more rigid so when you apply force this nothing moves and it just basically stays there and rubs instead so these coatings that's basically exactly what they do no, not only do they remove uh, reduce friction reduce parasitic losses and waste heat but they're, in a sense they're almost sacrificial as well because instead of eating into the cylinder which you chance of micro welding and stuff this teflon work well to shite so you're all good looking at our bad piston same kind of wear pattern really if you look at it same kind of wear pattern there maybe not to the same extent same kind of thing here some of this could have been scraped off through shipping and stuff but that there looks very much like that there all is good so what else can we see we can see like i say the uh, lack of carbon compared to the other one lack of carbon buildup. this piston has got too hot now the next thing we want to look at is you can see as you work your way around that none of this let me just master of zoom it master of zoom you can see as you work your way around that none of this is deflected downwards what you can see is this flaking upwards like this this bend upwards but the ring which is pretty much in intact has not broken or snapped in four places or bent or deflected in four places one part of the ring has snapped and you can see a good guff on there so this is where it's seized in the cylinder because it's got too hot where is the bit of the ring the bit of the ring isn't in here i haven't lost it it is just gone so that bit of that ring fuck knows it could be just rattling around somewhere um where was that break well these rings can rotate they were freely rotating um so i don't know where it's broke um next thing you can see on this thrusting side here you can see that we're actually thrusting like fuck on here so if you look at this piston on the heavier side on the thrusting side because these are not the sack cylinders this is the machine marks are well intact there if you can see that how well you can see that um so it hasn't thrusted on the side so it has thrusted on the side here you can actually see and i did do a close-up picture that bit there you see that little blob that's a bit of metal that's made its way down and it's been literally squashed and it's welded that's that's it it's part it's there to stay now um but you can see that it's thrusted on the side here on the surface it's also thrusted on this bit that's bent up now that could be after the fact after this broke up maybe this was sticking out and it rubbed against there same thing here you can see some rubbing here that's actually bent away because that's actually bent inwards um same kind of thing there you can see some basically some bending and some rubbing here and exactly the same there. that's a good example you can see at the top here you can see the machine marks then she just disappears nothing goes shiny this is the thrusting side so this is where we'd imagine this to start to happen hence a lot of the bits so basically because you've got loads of bits here and not many bits here 
because you've got loads of bits here, it's these two corners that fail first. Why? Because this is when the engine, the engine's running fine, 13,000 RPM, it's going like an idiot, and then these brake, and then these go and as it's starting to slow down, these bits probably failed as well and just snapped off and made a fucking whole mess. But as you can see, there's enough clearance in the piston for it not to really mark any of this because this is clearance where these valve relieves are. The centre isn't, but it didn't bash that because your chamber goes away from there. It's only on these squish bands, these squish regions here where it's hammered here. So I'm guessing, and I, this is all guesses obviously, but from the evidence, this side is the thrusting side. It receives the most contact with the cylinder that there is. These bits have blown off and they've been hammered in here and then these bits have failed straight afterwards because the whole thing's just getting hot. When these things start skidding, the whole fucking piston gets hot. So does that mean that this skidding caused these? Probably. When you try and basically hit this, when this starts to touch the sidewall, this gets really, really hot, enough to melt away a lot of this piston material and all the rest of it. It's enough for a bit to break off, get wedged in there and fuse to the side of the cylinder because it's rubbing between cylinder and piston. Um, and then basically this whole region gets hot, this gets hot, and that basically allows these bits. Now these bits have the weakest sections. If you can look, and I've done some close-up pictures, the gap there, let me get something pointy. The gap there, this is a ring groove. You can see my thing going there. So we are talking two millimetre material right in that corner, right in that corner, in this corner here, and this corner here. This is the weakest part. So what the fucking hell's happened? Basically, the piston has got too hot for whatever reason. With it being a rear cylinder, maybe the mixtures were wrong because this cylinder will always run hotter unless you had add add additional fuel. Clogging the injector, shit, something like that. Running too lean on this cylinder caused this piston to get too hot. He said oil squirters are fine and all the rest of it. There's burnt oil, that doesn't mean... I want to see the R3 one, and like I say, the R3 one was an exercise. It wasn't saying that is the problem, I'm not privy to all the information. Also, oil squirting could be a problem with this. Maybe it got blocked momentarily or something went wrong, something... whatever. This piston got far too hot. This is not detonation. If you look at this piston, there is no... Both the monster engines detonated. There is no sign of detonation on this piston. This is smooth. If I go... Like that. Same kind of noise. If I do this on this one, different piston obviously. Can't hit that. Keep on missing. You can hear how rough that is. That's detonation. So this piston's got too hot and it shit the bed. Because it's got too hot and because these pistons thrust into the sidewall. Like I was saying with the R3, and I'll come, a bit, I'll come out a bit. Because these pistons get too hot, they expand. They expand further than they should because the piston's hotter than it should be. The clearances between pistons and the cylinders are at maximum operating temperature with everything working great. Because the, this piston got too hot, it has expanded, th th basically it's expanded more than it should have done, which means it starts skidding into the cylinder. When it starts, to, it's a seize, just like two strokes when they don't get enough fucking oil. Two stroke pistons will expand, but that oil needs to be there to try and act as a barrier. This has expanded so much that it's basically scuffed it regardless. It's squished out all that oil, it doesn't give a shit, and it's gone sayonara. Now, like I say, this is totally different to our failure we saw with detonation, which is detonation failure is going down. This piston hasn't cooked. It doesn't look like this. The carbon is, you know, has been blown away on the detonation side, which you'd kind of expect. But there's no burn marks on the underside. Um, the rings are pretty much complete, apart from the detonation damage we can see. With this one, something cool and funky has happened. So... The top ring is broken. We can see that it's broken there, but it isn't really bent. It's not, you know, it's not bending upwards or anything. It's pretty much flat. 
This one is actually the, the second ring that has shit the bed properly. So, let's get the second ring out. If we can. And she, as you can see, she's wedged. Proper, proper wedged. Oops. What happened there? Look at that. We're missing quite a lot of ring. <laughs> Is she flat? Yep, yeah, so I'll show you that. No, no, like I say, I'll use my fingers because then you can see it. Oh, but you squeezed it flat. No, I didn't. There you go, look. Yeah, pretty flat, just like the other ones. But we've got loads of bits stuck in here. She has fractured like a motherfucker. And I mean fractured. So much I can't even get the bastards out. There's one bit. Have you noticed, these are all flat. I've got some pictures before I'm doing this. Back here now, another bit. She is fractured like a motherfucker. So why is this fractured like this? This is on this side, the thrust facing. Everything's got too hot expanded and literally nipped the ring. It's literally squished the ring to the point where the ring, when it's trying to rotate and flap around and do its thing, these are stuck. And the reason they're stuck is because the ring groove has collapsed. Why is the ring groove collapsed? Because force is being applied and it's hot. This aluminium is now malleable, just like when you heat metals to bend them. When you heat steel or you heat aluminium to put bend in. Still, there's so many fractures in this. Like I said, I'll show you the picture now of all the fractures you can see in this ring. Clean breaks. But have you noticed that this ring groove has trapped this ring? This ring groove hasn't blown up and expanded. It's actually the top one. When the basically what's happened is is when because this piston is so hot, because the piston's getting weak, when this ring, when the piston goes down and the ring tries to butt up against this seat and seal out, there's gases in there that are pushing that ring down and pushing it out. But them gases have gone in there and they're pushing against the piston top groove, the, the the top surface of the ring groove, as well as pushing down on the ring and as well as pushing out. Pressure pushes everywhere. The increased pressure in this cylinder acts on every single surface. And what it's done is, is it's just blown out the top. Now, as soon as you start to put pressure on this, so you're trying to lever this top piston surface up, you're trying to lever it up. As soon as you slam that into a cylinder wall because it's on the power stroke, increase the pressure, and then try and drag this piston down on this surface that's scuffing, it just goes, ha ha, it's just a lever. Let me get a piece of paper. So what's happening here is you have a ring groove, like so. You have a piston ring, like so. That's thrusting against our cylinder wall, which is here. But you've got to remember that this thing has closed right up, so she's butting against the wall like this. So there's our piston. You keep our ring groove there, back of that. The gases have come past the, the squeeze past here, and they're applying a pressure to everything like that, even booting the ring out. So the ring is forced against the cylinder wall, like so. These are high, high pressures. Really, really stupid, you know, fucking mental pressures. Um, I'm just trying to say that compared to what you're used to using, like, you know, 45 PSI in your tyre or something. So, like I say, what's happened is is that we've, we're have we coming real down low, thin here. This is the thin section of the piston, forget that bit. And you've got pressures pushing up, like this, so you've got a force, a net force going up against this part of the piston. You're thrusting this way against the cylinder wall, so the cylinder wall is resisting that. So where are you going to go? You've got a force going that way and that way, so your net force is that way, like that, because you've got to add these two together. You've got slight forces pushing this way, you've got a force pushing at the bottom. There's a, a little trick you do, which is you've got force pushing up, you've got a force pushing out like that, so you go tail to tail, uh, nose to tail like that, which is the which way your force is going. So you're literally just going to lever here. You've got pressure, pressure, pressure. This is your, your fulcrum. <laughs> And it just goes, ha, and snaps the fuck out of it. That's what happens.
But how can it do this? You might say, well, maybe just the pressure was too high. But the pressure, the pressure could be too high, and it could just cause this cylinder to fail. But that wouldn't basically say how much of the scuffing. You've got a lot of side loading going on here for this to really become a problem, um, for it to break your rings and so on and so on. And you would think, well, if we're, rush if we're running pressures, really high pressures and all the rest of it, um, both pistons would have gone if we're running the same compression ratio. Maybe the compression ratio is wrong. Like I said, I'm not privy to a lot of inf this information. But she has failed, uh, failed at the weakest point. And you can even see, you can even see that this has kind of just been a, a lever. Because you can see the bend. You can see the bend of this material. It has sheared, snap sheared, fuck off. It's probably started in this corner, actually, not at the actual edge of the ring. Uh, it's just gone, bang, fuck off. And then, obviously, you pistons now bloody toast they've got shit flying around you hammering the fuck out of it but this here this damage here and very little little damage here tells us that this side was the first one which is on the thrusting side which makes a lot of sense um but this doesn't really tell you the main reason why your piston got too hot if your piston got too hot that your um if your compression is really really high then you're more likely to get detonation but there is no sign of detonation on this piston. So, it's just a, ki a piston cooling issue. Um, the guy did say we re reduce the compression. Well, yes, that's going to reduce the temperatures and all the rest of it. Um, you know what I mean? But you need to run it more to see if that really is a problem. And check your pistons. Um, but yeah, like I say, cooling possibly. But this piston's got too hot. And... There are many reasons why pistons get too hot, and you need to find out what those reasons are. Too high a compression, meh, but you'd usually see detonation before you kind of see this kind of damage. Is it the design of the piston because it's got these um, breakaway corners? Well then yes, running too a high compression with this kind of design could cause you them issues. Um, and it shows you the asymmetry between cylinders. A bit different is this than, like I was saying about the R3, apart from if they were really dicking around with their uh, fuel ratio mixtures and got them wildly out, is that these are different environments because it's this LV twin malarkey. With the R3, you've got two cylinders sat next to each other. So really, for the R3, everything should have been the same and gravy. Yeah, obviously fucking around with the fuel air mixtures, but... Um, these have different fuel air mixtures, this being the rear and this being the front, and the reason why is because of their environmental conditions. Here, where the ring... Let me bring you in, that's quite cool, I didn't notice that before. Oh, I don't think I did, maybe I took some pictures of it. You can see there that she's opened up ever so slightly. So this thing has started to lift and then it's just given way there. So these are the highest points. Um, a force, this skidding here, this skidding here makes this side of the piston hot. Which is what the weird thing about the R3 is, is the fact that they have to sack cylinders to try and reduce this. So, Yamaha seem to be on the ball, the Kai, nah. There's going to be some more because there's some um, other bits we can look at and this de Saxon cylinders is quite important with this engine and it's weird that the Kai don't do it. As far as I know... I need to look at the drawings, but I'm pretty sure that, well, by the look of that, these side skirts, Ducati, are not the sacks in their cylinders, and it might be a good idea because there's some other failures that are kind of related. There's probably some bits I missed out because I'm trying to keep this all in my head. I didn't write any of this down. I did take loads and loads of pictures, and I'll put a gallery thing at the end just so you can see. Have at it in the comments. Tell me what you think, so on and so forth. And I'll see you in a, in a bit. Two thumbs fresh, but fingers.